uh, the ultimate goal that these people have in mind is the goal to um, create a one world government run by the banking industry, run by the bankers, where, and, and they're doing it in sections. The, the European currency, the euro, and, and the European constitution is one part of it. Now they're trying to do it in America with the North American Union, right? And they want to create a new currency called the Amero, right? And uh, the, whole, the, the whole agenda is to create a one world government where everybody has an, R, R, an RFID chip implanted in them, all money is to be um, in those chips, right? There'll be no more cash. And this is giving me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. And all money will be in your chips. And so, any, so not, instead of having cash, any time you have money in your, in, your, in your chip, they can take out whatever they want to take out whenever they want to. If they say you owe us this much money in taxes, they just deduct it out of your chip digitally. Total control. Total control. And if you're like me or you, and you're protesting what they're doing, they can just turn off your chip. And you have nothing. You can't buy food. You can't do anything. It's total control of the people. And that chip's connected to a database that has your purchasing records, what you do, what everything, you sell. Everything is in there, you know? And so they, they want a one-world government controlled by them, Everybody being chipped, all your money in those chips, and they control the chips, and they control people, and you become a slave. You become a serf to these people. That's their goal. That's their intentions. Eric, can you be specific about when you met Rockefeller, how it happened in these discussions? I met Rockefeller through a female attorney I knew who called me up one day and said, uh, one of the Rockefellers would like to meet you. I had made a video called Mad as Hell. And uh, he'd seen the video and wanted to meet me and knew I was running for governor of Nevada. So sure, I'd love to meet him. And I met him and I liked him. And uh, uh, he was a very, very smart man. And uh, we used to talk and share ideas and thoughts. And um, he's the one who told me uh, 11 months before 9-11 ever happened that there was going to be an event. Never told him what the event was going to be. But there was going to be an event and out of that event, uh, we were going to invade Afghanistan to run uh, pipelines from the Caspian Sea. We were going to invade Iraq, you know, to take over the oil fields, establish a base in the Middle East, and make it all part of the New World Order. And there's going to be this war on terror, uh, which is no real enemy. And the whole thing is a giant hoax, you know, but it's a way for the government to take over the American people. 9-11 was done by people in our own government and our own banking system to perpetuate the fear of the American people into subordinating themselves to anything the government wants them to do. That's what it's about, and to create this, war, this endless war on terror. And, that's why we, and that was the first lie. And the next lie was going into Iraq, you know, uh, to uh, get Saddam Hussein out with his weapons of mass destruction. The fact of the matter happens to be that the whole war on terror is a fraud, it's a farce. Because you can't define a winner. There's no one who's going to beat, so it goes on and on forever. And they can do whatever they want. They scare the hell out of the American public. Look, this whole war on terror is a fraud. It's a farce. It's very difficult to say it out loud because people are intimidated against saying it. Because if you say it, they want to make you into a nutcase. It was 9-11 that allowed this war on terror to begin. And until we get to the bottom root, of 9-11, the truth of 9-11, we'll never know about the war on terror. Humans injected with a tiny chip holding the key to all of their private information. But as you're about to see in our CBS 46 investigation, it's not fiction. In fact, it's being marketed in Georgia as life-saving technology. So why do some experts say it's potentially deadly? CBS 46's Kim Fedick investigates. It's used in key cards, prepaid tolls, even checked luggage. It's called RFID technology, or radio frequency identification. Small chips that store information. So, here's the chip. And now that same technology is literally available in the flesh, with chips injected right into people's arms. It says it burns a little bit. That's about it. Atlanta firefighter John Santola was injected with the chip about the size of a grain of rice. When scanned, the number on the chip is linked to a database with Santola's medical history. I had to go help me uh, in case of emergency. 
Santola was chipped when Florida-based Verichip Corporation set up a booth at an Atlanta firefighter conference. They market the chip primarily for safety reasons, storing medical information for first responders, Alzheimer's patients, even children. It is the only product that has been approved by the FDA for this specific purpose. The FDA approved the use of chips in humans in 2004, but since then it's caused quite a bit of controversy with some consumer groups, concerned about privacy, even health concerns. These are very powerful tools, especially if they fall in the hands of a, as somebody with political ambitions. One of the loudest voices of opposition is right here in the Boston area, a Harvard doctor and author of spy chips. These technologies will not make us safer. I think they'll make us sitting ducks for Big Brother. Dr. Katherine Albrecht also compiled 16 years of studies. She says proved the chip can cause cancerous tumors. It's clear as day that these tumors were not only malignant, but they metastasized, they spread to the lungs, the liver, the thymus, the, the, the brain. These pictures show the tumors growing around the actual chip in the mice and rats. Certainly the company, I mean, they, they've done, I think, a, 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 a tremendous job of keeping that information under wraps for the last several years. We sat down with the chief medical officer of Verichip and asked about the link to cancer in mice. Yeah, I, I am not aware. I mean, I would have to take a look at uh, what, what's, being, uh, what's out there right now. I'm not aware of any, any issues at this point. But weeks later, Verichip sent 26 pages of literature claiming the incidence of microchip-associated sarcoma in rodents is very low and claims the mice in at least one of those studies were genetically engineered to be tumor prone. No doubt in your mind that this is safe for us medically. Yes, I mean from everything that I've seen, um, I, it, it's, it's very superficial. It's been in the animals for 20 plus years. John Sintola won't need to worry about the cancer debate. His chip fell out after two days. <laughs> would you get it again? I would not get it again. You know, what's the end goal? And he said the end goal was to get everybody chipped. To control the whole society, to have the, to have the bankers, the, the elite people, you know, the bankers and some governor controlling the world. What, and, and, and I said, all the, all the people in the Council on Foreign Relations believe this way you do? He said, no, no, no. You know, it, it, most of them believe they're doing the right thing. A lot of them believe it's better, it's better off being socialistic. You know, we have to convince people that capitalism, that socialism is really capitalism. Because America is becoming a socialist country. It's a communist country today. I saw the evil behind what I thought was a noble adventure.